Hey, folks, welcome to part two out of three for the Topic 8 discussion. So, Mr. Sanders, coming at you live from the 317 from our beautiful classroom here at Southport High School in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, uh, what we are covering for this particular video is we are moving on from the, the understanding the distinctions between civil rights and civil liberties to actually thinking about the Bill of Rights and the 14th Amendment and how these two um, – are this actually the set of amendments in particular impact civil rights and civil liberties discussions and also impacts what we can do on a daily basis, essentially our freedoms. So when it comes time to actually implementing civil liberties, when it comes to freedom of speech, when it comes to freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly and of petition and all the fun things that come with the, the Bill of Rights and the 14th Amendment, whenever it comes time for people to actually exercise it, most people typically have a, lim a limit. When it comes to freedom of speech, you will often find that people love to say that they enjoy the freedom of speech, for example, but what about hate groups like the KKK or um, neo-Nazis um, or self-proclaimed hate groups that focus on and target specific groups of people, either historically or in the current day? To what extent should that kind of speech be allowed? And so that kind of controversy comes up time and time again because people involved in the KKK, legally speaking, and this is not my own opinion, this is what's been decided by the Supreme Court, legally speaking, people can join the KKK as long as it is a member, uh, as a representative of their freedom of speech. Again, not my opinion, just what I'm saying is what the Supreme Court has said. However, how they ex express that freedom of speech, how they impact others with that freedom of speech is where it finally comes into, okay, why is this, this is controversial, right? And so then it actually is debated and discussed in front of the Supreme Court. And while some of you who are watching this may say, wait, why would the, free, why would the KKK be allowed? Um, technically, why would there be technically, um, why would people be allowed to legally join such an organization that professes such things that a lot of people don't like, well, it also goes back to your ability to practice your own free speech and your opportunities or your freedom to say that, hey, I don't agree with the KKK. And so the ability for someone to agree or disagree on something ultimately goes back to we all are allowed to have the freedom of speech, but when it comes down to whether or not we're, what people can express their full freedoms of speech, people stop. And they say, hold up, KKK, nah, nah, too much for me. And that's typically where they would say that there's a limit to the freedom of speech that someone can do. And so these limits that people are socially placing on the KKK and such are reasons for the center of debate over the 14th Amendment and also the Bill of Rights. So when interpreting this, uh, the law or the Bill of Rights and the 14th Amendment, when the Bill of Rights was in, was created and passed as a set of the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, it was really only created to restrict the federal government. States still had the opportunity to restrict the freedom of speech of their citizens, to create laws based on how that state felt and how the state's populace or constituents voted in different parts of the election. However, most states were like, nah, like the Bill of Rights is pretty cool with me. So they added it to their constitutions as well. But when it comes to key clauses of the 14th Amendment, here's what I want you to know. Four principles were asserted in the text. They were that state and federal citizenship for all persons, regardless of race, was reaffirmed. No states would be allowed to abridge the privileges and immunities of citizens. So if you are a citizen, you are granted the civil rights and or, sorry, civil liberties that are written about in the Constitution and as well as the Bill of Rights. And no person was allowed to be deprived of life liberty, or property without due process of law. No person can be denied, denied equal protection from the law. And when it comes down to it, most lawsuits involving the civil rights, which will impact how you answer their discussion post, eventually come down to the 14th Amendment and people saying they are not being treated equally under the law, either through discrimination, racism, or a number of other social problems that we are looking at today, even in 2020. So with that, I will end this video. That ends part two out of uh, three videos. And so I am officially clearing you. Go to part three.